Hey guys, how y'all doing out there? Time for another tutorial from Pinnacle Studio Pro. Today, we're doing a tutorial on the Wizard Spell Effect. Let's get into it. Alright, this is a real cool effect that you can do. You don't need to have a magic wand like I had or a little wizard stick. You can use a stick, a rock, a freaking belt. I don't care, a hangman's noose. You can use a cat. I don't care. A spell can come out of anything. Alright? So, just go ahead, follow the tutorial, and make it happen. First and foremost, I'm going to pull your video clip down into the timeline track where you want it. I already have mine down here. And then you want to move your scrubber to a position where the individual is like right at the end of making his motion of the spell. And I like it right there. That's a good spot. So now you want to go ahead and move the scrubber three frames after the move and split the clip. So I'm going to use a step to one frame forward and I'll move forward three frames. One, two, three. And now I'm going to split the clip. Good to go with that. So now I want to go to this first clip. So I'm going to left click on it to activate this clip. I'm going to right click on it and go to open effects editor. Now that I got this bad boy open, I'm going to stretch my timeline out by going ahead and moving my cursor right where the numbers are and it becomes a little clock. I'm going to stretch this out all the way out because I want to see every single frame that I'm working with. Now I'm going to click on the jump forward and go to the end of the whole clip right where I split it, right where at the end of his move. Next, I'm going to go to add-ons and I'm going to create my little spell blast here. I'm going to go to Red Giant Motion Graphics Toolkit. I want to go to No Light Factory. Now under No Light Factory, I'm going to go and I'm going to pick a preset. It's called Cool Lens. So I'm going to activate that. I'm going to make sure I'm at the end of the clip again. And I'm going to move this little lens right to the end of the magic wand or the wizard stick or whatever the heck it is harry potter's friend so i'm gonna click on the controls to open this up and the first thing i want to do i'm gonna make it easier to move it right to the end of it by bringing the brightness down so i can see exactly where this little bastard's at all right so now it's a lot smaller i know where the middle of it is so i want to move my light source over by dragging it and moving it down. Alright. Because I've already done this before. I know exactly where I want them at. So. I'm just going to type them in. You might have to go ahead and keep dragging them. Until you get them exactly where you want. Or just use you know. Movement with the numbers little by little. Now that I got it where I want. I want to move my brightness up to 150. So I'm going to click on it until it becomes blue. And I'm just going to type in 150. <laughs> and now that I have this done, I'm going to activate my keyframes by clicking on this little diamond. So that's the end of this. So I'm going to go back. Now that I have my timeline stretched out, I can step back and see each frame individually. So I'm going to step back three frames. And now I'm going to go ahead and move the effect once again, the little cool lens to the end of the stick, making sure it's still where it's supposed to be. So I'm going to drag this down again just to look and see where the center is. It's a little bit off. So I know where I want it already. So I'm just going to click on this to turn it blue. And I'm going to type in my parameters here. Same thing, the other source. And now, don't forget to bring your brightness back up. This time, I'm going to bring the brightness up to 100. All right. Good to go. So now, I'm going to move back two more frames. 
And once again, making sure that my little friend is right at the end of the stick. And this time I'm going to move my brightness up to 75. I'm going to go back two more frames. You're starting to get the picture here, huh? Yeah, yeah. All right, so let's move this down. And now I'm going to move my brightness to 50. So basically, as you can see, what I'm doing is I'm going from the end of it where it's the brightest and I'm going back in time to make it lighter and lighter and lighter as I go back to the beginning of the move. So you get the concept here. All right, good. Going back two more frames. I'll speed this up for you by just typing it in because pretty much know where these need to go already. And now, of course, I'm going to bring my brightness down to 25. <laughs> so I'm going to go back two more frames. And now I'm going to make my brightness zero. And now I got just got to go back to the first keyframe. So I can just click on this button here and it'll go back to the beginning of the whole video where the first keyframe is. See, I saw bright because that's where I started it off. When I was at the end, I made a real bright one. So the first keyframe is going to match it. So I just need to go ahead and make sure that I move this to zero. But I also just want to move it up to where the first keyframe was, or the last one that I created. Don't really need to do that, but... Eh. Move it off the screen there. And move my brightness to zero at the first keyframe. And I think I like it. Now, the next thing I want to do is go to the next keyframe forward. So I'm going to step forward. Now, I have all these little spots in between. So I want to make sure that the actual cool lens or the effect is on the end of the wand for everything. So now I'm going to step forward. Excuse me. I'm going to step forward to the frame in between. And see, it's not on point. So I need to move that. So let's go ahead and move this sucker where it needs to go. But the good thing about this part is you don't have to change the brightness. Because the brightness is going up on its own from the keyframes we made before. Now we're just making sure that this bad boy is matching where the wand is the whole way through. So now I'm going to step forward to the next frame, which it should be on it already. Step forward again. It's not really on it here. So I'm going to move this where it needs to be. Keep stepping through to any of the 
frames where it's not at, make sure it's on point. And that looks so freaking beautiful, don't you agree? Alright, next thing we need to do is we need to go to add-ons again. Go back to Red Giant Motion Graphics Toolkit. And this time we're going to add Shine. So on Shine, we're going to leave it on default. But we're going to go to Colorize. And we're going to change the Colorize to None. All right, you want to make sure we're on the last position once again by clicking on jump forward to the end. So making sure we're at that last position. And we're going to go to controls. And we're going to change our ray length to 1.1. Now at this point we want to go ahead and activate our keyframes. And we want to step back four frames, so and we want to make sure that the position of this shine effect is at the same exact place as the uh cool lens. So right here we have a source X and Y, they both have 50. But what you can do is just click on no life factory, and since the scrubber is right here. It's going to give you the same parameters where the scrubber is at right now. So I know it's at 42.3 and 83.5. So I'm going to go back to shine. And I'm going to type in 42.3. 83.5. So now I know that they're both exactly at the same place. Now at this position, I want to make my ray length zero. Now I got to go back to the first keyframe because remember when you activated keyframes, the keyframe was placed at the beginning. So I'm going to go back to the first keyframe and make sure my ray length is zero here as well. What that does is it stays from zero from this keyframe to this keyframe. Then it goes to the last keyframe with a big giant burst. And you're going to freaking love it. It's going to be the biggest, loveliest burst you've ever seen. Alrighty then. Last thing we need to do. Let's go to color. And we want to go to base color. Let's make sure we change it to no preset. Make sure we're at the end once again. Go four frames back. Activate our keyframes here. And we're going to leave it like it is at this frame, but we're going to go to the last frame again. And we're going to turn the brightness up to about 20 Let's see here. and it'll create a keyframe there so what that does is these keyframes it stays base and then the last one it gets real bright so it's going to go from here to here it's going to get real bright click ok you're done pal it's it the wizard spell effect in Pinnacle Studio 16 Ultimate. All right, people. Y'all know the routine. I did something for you. Do something for me. The thumb. The one that's, you know, at the bottom of this video. The one that's pointed in the upward direction. Click it. Like it. Live it. Love it. Hug it. All right. Comments. Leave me a freaking comments, all right? If you leave me a comment, I'll get back to you. You know I'll try to help you out if you got any questions. And guess what? If not, you know, just say hi or something. Give me a man hug. Give me some dap, whatever. And if you do have a question that I can't answer, guess what? 
I'll point you in the right direction to get you the help that you freaking deserve. All right. And last, but definitely not least, don't you ever forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon. Thank <laughs> you.